they're kind of super stretched out. Like they're clean, but that's nice. This matches the Kane's uniform. Perfect. All right, folks, we are live from Wanto, New York. This is Food, This is Bob, or That is Bob, This is Food. It is the open preview show for 2024. Uh, Rob supporting United Wiffle teams, pretty messed up. Uh, nice try. Pretty, pretty, pretty messed up. The hat. Where's your hat? Uh, I, it's a great question. I answer a great question in the car. It's bad. Fair enough. Um, all right, folks, so very exciting stuff. We have the open schedule for this weekend, games Saturday and Sunday. Um, it should be a lot of fun. And we've got 30 teams, so very exciting about that. Uh, we're going to go through the wild card draw today. Uh, we're going to draw the 12 teams in the uh, wild card bracket. And then we're going to go through the league bracket and make sure that all the matchups everyone understands. We go through a little bit of the schedule, and we go from there. I know that we're streaming because I it came up on the computer. Yeah, it turned up on the computer. Excellent. No, that other time we just weren't sharing the screen. We weren't sharing the screen that time. I'll, I'll monitor that. that. Very bad. <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, again, oh, reminder also: Suffolk County PAL Complex, Holtzville, New York. Uh, out east, 700 Ferros Road, Hotel New York. Uh, hotel accommodations were on the uh, open post, but uh, I guess we'll repost them tonight or tomorrow just for everyone to continue to also text me on the side about it. Anyway, um, and I know the hotel rooms are expensive. They were expensive in Staten Island. They're expensive in Fayetteville. I don't know. They're expensive everywhere because it's a hotel room on a Saturday night during the summer. So money's fake. I don't know what you want from me. Um, it is what it is. So, any uh, any initial thoughts before we get to the wild card draw? No, not none at all. Very good. No thoughts. All right. Zero. Well, we are going to then do a couple of things here. We're going to minimize this screen here. Then we're going to share, and we're going to share the desktop, so we have everything avails to us. And Lou would be very proud of us using numbers. Yeah, bro. Uh, you have the whole desktop up right now. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So here's our uh, pool play prelim draw. We'll go through the other pages afterwards, but uh, basically here's your uh, pool play prelim draw. So you've got the six teams from the wild card group one up here, six teams from wild card group two. They're going to play five pool play games, four innings per game. In these middle two pools, you'll see the lead team. So once they lose in the bracket, which we'll get into, they will drop into pool play, play a certain amount of games. Could be four, could be five, depending on when you drop. Um, you are – and then everyone will be reseated before Saturday night or afternoon. Right. Okay. Here we go. Let's take a look at our board. We've got our 12 teams here. Should we do a shuffle? Yeah, I'll do a shuffle. Let's do three shuffles. Three shuffles. Wow. One. Two, three. Well, isn't chaos with a K? Uh, no, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. Not what I was. That's, that's not what they filled out on the form. Lame team, anyway. All right. So here we go. So we're gonna go pool one first, then pool two, back and forth until we fill the twelve wiffle ball teams. Here we go. We'll also talk a little bit about each team when we pick them since they are not league teams, yeah. and we'll just remind everybody Pretty stacked non-league. Right. Yeah, I agree. Very good. That's Speaking good. of stacked, the first team off the board is. The Black Dog Country Club. How's that tongue look? Yeah, that's good, right? Okay, very good. Congratulations to Maddie Griff. Congratulations on having well. children and Dean Apple on getting married. And, um, you know, welcome to the world. Very nice, very nice. Must be nice to have stuff and things. Yeah, stuff uh, and now I think they also have Whitener on the team. No. Uh, not Whitener, sorry. Um, Pushy. Pushy no, not Pushy and Habs. Yeah, them. sorry. Well, he had a name for Habs on the on the on the form. Probably some really it. lame nickname. Yeah, you know, it's, it's probably awesome. really bad. He probably wear the mask again. Whatever that thing was. Sorry, Habs. But thank you again for them coming down, and pr proactively thank you to DNAP for probably bringing down the trophies and the plaques from Lou. Uh, false. He'll, He's he'll, mailing them. If them. he forgets to mail them to you. <laughs> Ah, okay. oh, the governor's team. So this is a throw together team of Long Island Whifflers, and they played a few times this year on various teams. So roster and plus secret roster. It's definitely a secret roster, but got actual people on the roster. So if you're playing them, probably a good thing. Wow. All right. 
Moving back to, let's zoom in a little bit here so we can actually see these names, you know. There we go. Okay. Going back to pool number one. Who will be joining Black Dog Country Club and playing them in the first game? It's going to be K. With a C. With a C. Good. Two mass teams playing each other. Uh, four hours. Five hours for a minute. Well, they probably haven't played each other in the yard in a long time. Probably so. last year. Possibly last August 27th. Uh, that's what you get. Uh, 603, at least, or Chaos, did play, come down and play in a regular season event this year. They really played SQ4, made it to the finals where they got uh, they the play floor wipe. Right. Right. It's only five. five. State of mind, a old-timey league team making their return to the Diamond this year. They didn't play all this year as a full yeah. team. Uh, Lanigan did play with Jay and Jay's son. Right. And uh, Venti we... played once with his brother and friends. So that's fine. They're making what they want out of it. You know, Lanigan's married now. Venti with nine kids. You know, <laughs> Kyle with 15 kids. And Jay is a, a also, daycare, has kids. 80 kids to worry about. So guys with kids uh, with packed schedules. There you go. All right, team number C in the Vitali division will be the OG Goon Squad. Now, this team did play in a decent amount of Super Qualifiers this year. However, did not become a league team. Just well. played as a non-league team in a few times, but they got reps. Shout Does out Ethan to play? shout out to Ethan and the rest of the OG Goon Squad guys. And here we go. Piazza Division, team number letter I. <laughs> team number letter I. Boys in Zibanya, the main Lucas Francis and his main brethren. Players top champion from last year. Is that true? I believe my so. memory shot, so I you know I couldn't I tell you. I believe won. they won the players. Cup. Definitely were in the finals of the players cup. Very good. Well, shout out to them. They were trying to come down a week during the summer as well, but could not make it. So I'm glad that they were able to uh, make it. This definitely time. want to see them at the open. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're good guys. They're good kids. Everyone likes seeing them there because they rake. Mm -hmm. All right, we got our Vermont team. Who Vermont uh, did not necessarily have a full time league this year, so they are entering as a non league team, the Awesome Opossums. And Rob has assured me that Opossums has two P's and two S's. I did not verify. So if incorrect, you can please drop you us. You can always a trust the comments. Experts. Please drop a comment. Maybe like and subscribe if you haven't. Well, there's 14 so sorry souls actually watching this. Wow, wow. Probably new teams. And way too beautiful team letter J in pool number two here. Milstead and Co. making their return. They also did not play a lot this year. We had a lot of these like kind of traveling league teams not play this year, which is fine. Again, there's no one, we're never upset. Obviously, just disappointed we don't get to hang out with you guys more often. Correct. But, you know, again, People getting married, people having children, and this is part of the life, and that's okay. Sure, sure. Uh, my guess is this is going to be another New England team. This is shaping up to be a very New England. Uh, a nice regional tournament. There you go. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's more New York. Wow, this is going to be a tough, tough pool to get out of here. Yeah, someone's going to have to go three and two here. Benam, Jordan Pagano, Post, Vin Lee, Jordan Pagano. Jordan, oh, Jordan Pagano, Pagano Toast. I was like, well, Jordan could be his kid's name. And his kid <laughs> looks better and bigger than all of them. He should be in the next. Another guy with several years. kids. Correct. <clears throat> they travel well. They do travel well. Ah, here we go. Los Crusaders. It's James Stein. I believe it's pronounced Stitz. Poor Randy Dalby. It's really the, the the hard luck loser here is that Randy Dalby has to play with not only Stein, but also Sylvie. Two of the most miserable people in the league. Uh, on wildly different spectrums. Mm. Um, no offense. Um, so that should be a sight to see. But any team with a Randy Dalby that finds their way to uh, yeah, big, I mean, big no, spot. So. Big time player. Big time guy. Tall guy. Very, so very big tall. guy and big time player. So, and also, you know, Stein finds his way to big time games as well. He's the enemy this year, right? Or something, yeah. you know, something yeah. like They made that. it to a Final Four at a SQ, or at least Stein did, with Jordan and Vin Lee, right. actually. Was and Stein out. pitched one of the big games. He did. And um, he's terrible, though, like as a person. 
All right, let's see who's going to be the final team in this wild card draw. One, it's going to be the Swamp Donkeys, wow. the other Vermont team, and also a few other non-Vermont guys. Cool. Swampy. So at least the opossums donkeys. and the donkeys get to play each other. Yeah, that's cute. You like to have strange farm animals uh, playing <laughs> against each other. <laughs> uh, you it know, the, the opossum uh, are native marsupial here in New York. And this final spot here will Wait, be... plays over my wildlife. Uh, I didn't hear it, sorry. I was too busy. It's our only them. native marsupial. Here oh, possums, yes. Cobra. Gaij! Scott Thomas, James Flynn, and co. making a return. Uh, I have to check the form. We'll check the form in a minute. Two? Remember. Maybe. I'm not sure. I really don't remember. <laughs> Honestly. I just it was like, like Ham game. played that one year. with them. Right. Ham is playing on Chaos now yeah, because yeah. He, he didn't want to play... So the Cenos dropped, but now Ham is playing with Chaos. Sad. So you see how that happens sometimes? Yeah, it's sad. You wonder why it becomes more difficult to run these. Leaves. All right, folks. Let's take a look at our big pool here now. So this turned into a, a nice tough That's pool. A nice, yeah, it's a nice pool, too. So a lot of teams beating each other up. Uh, so let's take a look at the Vitaly Division, Black Dog, Chaos, OG Goon Squad, Awesome Opossums, Phenoms, and the Swamp Donkeys. All right. And then in the Piazza Division, the Governor's Team, State of Mind, Boys in the Barn, Way Too Beautiful, Los Crusaders, and Cobra Kai. I mean, this is almost the tougher pool. I would say this is definitely the tougher me. pool. I would if say you go so. to the other one, at least there you have, no offense to the two Vermont teams, two games that you feel like you can win. And OG Goon Squad is in like a situation where if they just have to pick off one of those three teams, you know, and take care of business against the others, mm -hmm. and, and you know, they can find their way in there. And Chaos could upset Phenoms or Black Dog and steal the pool because not everyone's going to be 5 0 mm -hmm. with everyone playing each other. So, and then meanwhile, the other division is just like really competitive across the board. Even the governor's team, you know, you never know who we're going to throw on that team. Next thing you know, it shuts you out and State of Mind loses a game early. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. These are like, this is kind of fun. This is almost like all like league teams, mm -hmm, like really mm -hmm. pretty firm league teams the last couple of years. So. I say so, yeah. And uh, you know, I don't know if the boys in the barn even played as much this year because they usually play in the Vermont region. So I'm not sure if they got. They any played some fast pitch. I know Lucas at least played a little bit at ECW. I don't really know about the other guys, but they're ball players and they rake. So I think they'll be fine. You know, but it is, you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's 30 teams in the tournament. Four teams from the from the NCT bracket are going to make it to Sunday. So of those 26 teams left, 20 are going to make. The double oh, in rounds. Right. So you could go two and three and still make it this year. I think there's going to be a good chance of that, right. to be honest. So because – Yeah, you have less teams. Mm -hmm. Higher yeah, percentage right. of teams making it, right. win percentage. Right. Um, so, listen, you win two, you got a chance. You win three, you're definitely in. Right. So you win one, we'll yeah. see in the Players' Cup unless you're a, a pro team. Yes. Yeah, so you want to talk about some of the new things this year because of timing? Mm, um, yes. We, we do not have lights at this facility, and there's kind of a multiple field situation. Uh, not like Staten Island per se. It's actually, I think, going to run smoother, mm -hmm. uh, especially during the day because you're going to have the wild card teams on their kind of their own baseball field all by themselves, which we kind of did last year. They were across the street and you had the wild card mm -hmm. just doing their thing and they zip through things. They're the ones that end up getting like some extra time between mm -hmm. double mm -hmm. limb because they could just zip through it. Yeah. But now with the proper amount of fields, uh, for every team, you know, even once teams drop into pool play from the big bracket, those games should mm -hmm. go pretty quickly. And uh, the hope is to get everything that we normally would in by 7 o'clock. Um, but we're very much prepared to move at least around to Sunday. And we, we pretty much have a decided cutoff at around, you know, 6, 6.30 for starting that last game. This is true. Um, yeah, so basically we'll, uh, we'll start with the double limb. This is usually the under the lights round. Um, and you'll notice really what the main difference is, is it used to be really this just long, arduous stepladder format where you really only have four games going on at a time. It's four games and four games and four games. So, and that takes time. And also there's a lot of waiting around. And as we've seen from Wiffle Bowl guys, nobody likes waiting around. Mm -hmm. So what we did with this format is that all those teams that would basically have to play a playing game or play in that first round of double in to make it the long way up the up the, um, the step ladder. They're actually going to start in their own single elimination. So really the punishment of finishing 13th through 20th is that you don't get that safety net of the double limb, right? You, last year you could play a game to get into the double limb and then you're almost guaranteed two more games. Right. Here, if you're 13 to 20, it's one and done, right? right? You, you could still win three and make it to Sunday as well. 
and uh, as uh, possible and play some of the teams that may start in the double limb, which we'll see here is the top 12 teams out of pool play. If you finish in the top 12, you're guaranteed two games. Which is 12 out of 26, which is, you know, mm -hmm. almost half, basically half mm -hmm. the field. We'll get a bye and a second life. So mm -hmm. a lot of opportunity for either middle of the road teams to secure one of these spots and be in a situation where they feel comfortable that they have a chance to advance. Mm -hmm. Even if they lose and have a safety net, well, they're playing teams that were lower seated than them at that point. Mm -hmm. Um and you also have a situation where the top four teams are in the same position they were last year, win one, and you're off to Sunday. You don't even have to play two games, so you're good to go. Right. All right. So and then the other thing different here is that the seeds, as you advance through double limb or the do or die bracket, um, those seeds become static, whereas we're not flip-flopping based on record as things move on. And that was one, I think, comment that a lot of players have the last couple of years for just like specific games, your run dip and record would count. Others would not. Last year, we kind of refined it a little more, but still had those seeds jumbling uh, when things were done. Now it's really once you're in your slot, just like you would be in a normal tournament, you've attained your seed. And now your seed is moving through until you get to Sunday where it's a completely new round. And now you're the five seed or the mm -hmm. 11 seed, et cetera. Yeah. It's a lot more streamlined as well. Cause I think also from a tournament director standpoint, that whole idea of reseeding everybody after Saturday, who's six and three, who's six and one, who's five. It just became very convoluted. And at least here, you know where you're going to be on Sunday. You're just following your row. Right. Right. And when you lose, you're going to move forward. You're going to follow your row as we have uh, Giuseppe. Oh, no. So uh, that's that. And we're going to move into another change also, Rob, is that we've got rid of those Players' Cup seeding games. Yeah. And when you get eliminated from pool play, you're right into elimination games. So actually not everybody is guaranteed a game on Sunday. Um, that is mostly a byproduct of the lack of lights, but also – I think guys want to play in meaningful games. And not that those seeding games weren't meaningful. It, it's They still kind of didn't have that same buzz. And they felt like, here's some just go play games. Right. So we wanted to make every game a little more meaningful, have a little more pizzazz. So there is a chance that you play a Players' Cup game on Saturday and you're done for the whole tournament. And obviously we then encourage you to stick around, come back on Sunday. Um, there'll be food trucks. There'll be a lot of things going on. We'll have a lot of excitement, obviously. Um but that's also a decision that was partly because we don't have lights at the facility this year, which is fine. All right. Is what it is. So you're still guaranteed six wiffle ball games. Mm -hmm. At least. Right. Um, that sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were having issues with players' cup teams, you know, leaving between Saturday and Sunday. I think we're going to have left of that anyway because a lot of teams are from Long Island. So that's Staten Island. You go over the bridge. You say, once you're over that bridge, like, I yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, here, I think you're going to have, you know, more teams willing to come back, especially these New York teams. But, um, you know, getting rid of some of the fluff on Saturday night is probably the wise decision, especially because we have a very special treat for Sunday is that the championship field is a different field than where we'll be on Saturday. It's at the same complex, but um, it's a legitimate uh, baseball field, um, probably one of the best fields we'll ever have played on. So mm -hmm. um, had we had it for both days, it was an area that we could probably have fit the entire tournament on one baseball field, which is pretty unheard of. Even mm -hmm. you, if we got like 10, 11 fields, which is a huge stretch. So to get like 15 or 16 yard fields would have been really a cool atmosphere. But we're still mm -hmm. going to put up like anywhere between six to 10 fields, I believe, but, but depending on where we end up on Saturday night and – Definitely uh, people should be staying around. And we may dabble with Home Run Derby or something like that, depending on how mm -hmm. things are going on Sunday. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because, again, timing is an issue this year. We have the lack of lights. So as you'll see on the – we'll bring it back to the double limb bracket here. You'll see this 7 o'clock round, uh, round 8. That round is, is actually to be determined. Um, that round could be on Sunday. Again, if, if the tournament is drag and there's a lot of extra innings, just, you know, sometimes tournaments – don't move as swiftly, right? We're going to make a decision basically after pool play. We're going to look at the clock, see what time it is. And if we feel that we can get all three of these rounds in without rushing, we're going to play them on Saturday. But if we really feel that that 7 o'clock round is going to be forced and you may have to start it and maybe it's too dark, we're just going to move it to Sunday. Yeah, don't want a meaningful game where it's costing four people a chance at the, you know, that could stay in the tournament for it mm -hmm. to be screwed up by, oh, it's starting to get dark. One team's okay with it. The other one just feels bad that they're – want to stop so i think we're going to make that call early in the day and if it means we finish and there's still an hour of light and we're like hey we made that call so be it because there's yeah. more time to go clean up and prepare right for and, the following and we also what happened last year with uh I, weather no but not weather well there was that game that had a stop in the middle of the, at like <clears throat> last year at the open 
um, I think it was Stein's game. I don't it, it was a game that basically the lights turned out on them at 12 o'clock and they had to come back Sunday morning and play those last right, inning right. or two. Oh, there was a couple games. Oh, it was so. with City. Yes. And, and, and then and, it went a million extra innings because yes. they tied it. It was like the yes. last inning because Otta tied it. And then yeah, they went like five innings. I do think it was Stein's team tied it. And then, yes. So so we don't want to have that. Like okay. Although that was fun, it was, it's not really the most uh, fair situation. So we will make the decision – um, like I said, right at the pool play, which would be around three ish. And if it's later than that, then we're probably going to remove the game. Right. All those teams would be playing on Sunday anyway, because if you lost in this position, no. you'd be playing in your players cup round Sunday morning anyway, unless you're a pro team and you know who you are if you're a pro team, but we'll put up that list later. Right. Um, which then I guess is like, you know what? We'll now have excuse to come back Sunday as well. Anyway. Yeah, right. I imagine all the pro teams have booked rooms for Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, most people are prepared to stay both days. It's kind of like a happy accident if it like works mm-hmm. out. Like, oh, we don't play at all. We're going. So with that being said, let's go to our league bracket. Wow. So we've got 18 teams this year. We'll start at the top. There'll be two quick playing games at 930 to get into the Super 16. Uh, could also – this this round probably will also start at 930 just in, in, in Why the – not- because by the time we get everyone together, is it nine? We can't get no one. Everyone's gonna be there eight thirty. You're trying It'll to be nine o'clock. Yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see. We no, can't, I can't trust that. guys. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I think anyway. This round could still start at the same time as this game. It's just these two games right, that would right. start later. Sure. And listen, no offense, have the team with thinking right. enemy. You know, these games would be pretty fast, and we'll be right on schedule. Yeah. So this round will be starting around ten forty-five, ten thirty, anyway. Yeah. Um, and with all the fields being so close, and you know, really yeah. everyone like team free set. Each other. Yeah. The fields will become available very fast. It'll just be like a regular pool play week, really, because it's yeah. those first two games that matter. That that's mm-hmm. really where all the league teams are like, "Hey, we win two, we're into Sunday." Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna get our ass kicked by Whiff Inc. or Enemy and be the three or four seed. But I, believe me, we've done it a couple of times. It's a great route because you get yeah. to just chill the rest of the day, play a couple of games to to get a little barometer on those really good teams. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's something to be said when it's really nice weather and you get knocked down and you get to play five, six, seven, eight games and get to battle. Because yeah. then when you do get to Sunday, if you get to Sunday, you know, you're certainly, you know, ready to rock. You might be a little tired, but it's certainly battle time. Well, and also perhaps ending early, having a lot more time to rest, getting home at a reasonable time, getting real sleep, after going to dinner. Wet. Right. It's just the conditions should be much better and, and it'll be a great Quality time. of play yeah. should increase. So like Rob said, these teams in the second round, you win two and you're on to Sunday. And really, if you're – just to avoid whiffing, obviously, this this uh, path right here, if you will, this dumps, knights, Kevin yeah, H, Bonkies, nice. this is where you want to be. Win two of these games and you are to Sunday. I expect the Bombskis to be, to be in that position because the Dark Knights, as shown during regionals, falter under pressure. That's true. That's true. Maybe Although they, they usually do make it to Sunday and then they don't show up on Sunday. They like lose like one nothing in some boring game. Right. Yeah. That's true. They're like, you know, maybe they're texting me complaining about it. But those are facts. And you we know, should have another position week to establish yeah. where they really are. Yeah, I agree to make sure that they are the fourth seed. Um and then going down to the bottom here, throwbacks flush, DK Chum. DK had a great run at regionals, so I think they feel like they have a good chance to pick off the chum. The flush probably believe that they should be onto Sunday. Um, so, and the throwbacks, you know, if they upset the flush, they could beat either of those other teams. So yep. it should be very interesting. That's where you want to be. You, know, you want to avoid those teams. Yeah. There are no back-to-backs in this game. So whoever starts, um, this, this game, this round two game cannot start round three, and right? These are standard. And then it will reset once you lose and wherever you go. Once you shift from basically one bracket to another, the pitching will always reset. Um, these are five inning games, a couple of clean extras, and then to loaded, um, this playing around though will just be a quick four inning game, and then right to a shootout. Right. All right. Once we get to the NCB semifinals, these are Golden Games. Um, the two winners will play for NC for the bracket final and first seed on Sunday. The loser of that game is two. The losers of the final four are seeds three and four, and will play for three or four respectively. Let me eliminate that game. Um, no, it's still there. Well, we eliminated the other game. Um, there used to be another one after that. Whoever won this game then played the two seed Got to it. try to steal the to two, steal two really seed. Yes. <laughs> we have to look. I really, I think we might have even gotten rid of this one and just made them three and four based on their actual seed. Yeah. Well, because I know we've talked about how that game doesn't really 
doesn't necessarily carry as much weight. Like being the three or the four seed on Sunday doesn't matter because you're in the same round. Right. But you know what? It's still a game. You get some reps in. And, and you don't know what that means. Anyway. Well, anyway, it's so early in the day. You don't know what the five seed is. But I guess it's like, play. it's kind of a situation if you're, you know, <laughs> protect yourself. Say the game goes chalk and in which with think enemy, you probably don't want to face with think more than you don't want to face enemy. So you'd rather you're in the three final seed. three, final four. So you can't yeah. worry about that. So really it's, it's always been like, unless you're going to be the one seed, you know, where you, win this semifinal game and get yeah. to here that those two losers of that semifinal game are like i don't care if i'm the three or the four yeah, they really want to play it we have to look back to last year see if we played it or not well we might not have because of the whole weather situation we might have just said well, yeah. at least see game. what we actually did if we just yeah. carried the seed like whoever was the higher seed would be tournament they get the three against the four more so uh but hey let's review that sunday bracket so yeah i guess if you're the three you would face the 12, which would be the 12th best team coming out of Saturday. If you're the 4, you face the 11. And then after that, it's kind of straight show up, 3, 6, 4, 5. You know, so, you know. And the, and those seeds are kind of wonky, too, because you're going, They're not true seeds you're going straight through. You're not doing a receive where, hey, this team is actually really good. They went, like, win, win, win by 10 runs. Like, yeah, yeah but, like, who cares if they won by 10 in some bracket and some double limit right. at that point? Their, their run diff and run scored mattered for the preliminary. Correct. Those five games in the morning. Also, I would argue at the end of the day, three of the four seed, you know, you're not playing all day Saturday. You're playing four football games versus That's six great. or seven possibly. So you're very fresh. You get to enjoy. And it's at 10 o'clock, maybe a little later if the other round has to move to Sunday. Right. Maybe you're not playing until 11. You know, you, people like to sleep and they people can warm up for, for forever. People sure. love warming up. Sure. I think people love warming up more than they like playing. Absolutely. If they're all the ball. Up the six hours of warm up, throwing the ball with the guys, drinking a beer, you know, it's fun. Very exciting. It's fun. Uh, so really, that's about it. Let's go into some of these matchups a little bit more in depth. Process, good fellas. You know, process have have shown that they are a very capable team, better than the 16 seed. Oh, they could uh, give Whitfink a little. They scare. could. It could be a good game in that that second round there. Um, Earl NRG. We're gonna get our ass. Uh, okay, fair enough. Um, but then again, but NRG is a team that also likes to. Kind of not yeah, play up to their not, potential. Not a, you know? great, not a great matchup for us. A couple of underperforming, underachieving yes, franchises very much that, so. did, that were very bad at regions. Correct. Both lost bad. their second round Correct. game. And then at least Energy won an exit tournament game and then lost in the exit finals. Yeah, we did. We lost in the Correct. exit tournament. Right, right. So Energy won and two on the day, Earl 0 and 2. Correct. Right. Right. Um, so actually, it makes sense that they play each other. I'd prefer if we were the 10 seed. Hmm, well, my stats. Stuff so sad. Uh, moving on down here, Dumps, Dark Knights. Again, you know, the Dark Knights probably favored in this game. Dumps have had kind of a poor show in the last couple of weeks, a couple of 0-3s, and, and uh, kind of a no-show at regional. So yeah. we expect them to step up um, and play a lot better. And the Dark Knights, you know, as much as we joke about how bad they are, they are bad, but they need to win this game, and then they need to beat the Bobskis and prove that they deserve to make it to some. Yeah, I, I agree. I think those are, you know, if you're the Dark Knights, you're where you want to be. Mm -hmm. You'd rather play the Bobskis than any of these other teams. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you and then if you get to face with Fink, you, you go for it in a golden game, and, and then you get a chance to be the one or two seed on Sunday. And then you really could feel pretty good because you get that extra buy in the morning. Right. So anything could happen. Moving on down here, game changers, ghouls. The game changers probably should win this game. But again, we're, we're, I'm bad. Bob is bad. It's Might true. not play. It's just anything can happen. A lot of bad players. Um, you know, we expect the ghouls have a full team. Gino Joseph should be there. Uh, if right. not, they've got uh, Aiden playing. McCarthy something so for him. He's actually kind of good. They're, they're actually much better. Than better. Than <laughs> they are. They're not as bad as that. Essentially better than that. Sounds like an illegal roster. But the winner will play the enemy and then likely drop into pool play. Uh, moving on down here, uh, with City screwballs. With City, I think itching to face. And they're gonna get their ass kicked. They they blew their load in regionals. Yeah, screwballs yeah. will outplay them, um, and go from there. Yeah, not quite sure why this is capitalized. I'm gonna just make that change right now. Wife City. <laughs> oh, that was yeah. gonna come up. He put it in caps again. Okay, uh, screwballs. I think were. Excited about facing you again after what they did to you in regionals, and by did to you, I mean just play an extra inning game. Yeah, they don't. I don't think they want to play. Um, but I think they like the matchup against Whip City, and they would like to face the enemy. I think they would. I think either one of these teams actually want to face the enemy. Absolutely, I think they're excited to face the enemy. They're not as compared to the Whip Thing situation. 
But, you know, when they have Didio, they are a little stronger in the pitching staff, which, that you know, if you say anything about the enemy that's been their, their tough suit this year is they just haven't pitched that well and they give up a lot of runs. Yeah. They can score with anyone, so it's not necessarily a problem. But, you know, when going gets tough, um, they've had they've struggled to keep the other team off the board, mm-hmm. especially the uh, with thinks of the world, which is obviously who they're eyeing. Uh, and then just to review the teams of the NCB that lose in rounds one, two, and three, we'll drop into pool play, and you'll see your the game number uh, is associated with your number here. So the loser of game one is right here. The loser of game two is right here. They will play across games since we have odd numbers. Everyone will play, again, four or five games. Your loss in the top bracket will not carry down with you, but your win will if you get a win. So, because one of the issues last year is that all these teams are dropping down, or actually two years ago, whenever it was, all, right, all these teams are dropping down with a loss, and none of them could be a top seed in pool play, no, uh, after pool play. The wild card teams were getting all the top seeds. Right. Now it kind of neutralizes it. Yes, you, you're not you're not bringing the loss down, but you still got to play four or five games, right. and then you have to go a true 5-0 and oh or a true 4-0, and oh, and then I think right. at that point um, it would be fair. And you're going to have a team drop and then still possibly be the 5-0 five, five and oh top seed going into Sunday. And then we'll fill out the rest of this board later tonight. Have it post a few ready to go. Um, pretty traditional pool play for the wild card teams. 40 games. Uh, one clean and then right to a shootout, we decided, yeah. for these games. Again, byproduct of the lights. But also, you're getting five clean innings, basically. And then you're going to go to a shootout, which is really no different than low bases loaded. It's just two outs and nobody in the field. But it's, you still get you still have an opportunity, and we'll review the shootout rules. Um, no matter who finishes the fifth inning, it starts at the top of the lineup. It's a two out situation, bases loaded, and you want to try to score as many runs as you can. Um, and then the home team will get a chance to rebut. These runs will not count towards run diff, though. So no matter what the score is, the winning team is still going to only win by one, just like in hockey. Right. You could win the shootout 3 nothing in hockey. We still only win the game one nothing or 2 one. Right. So in this situation, if it's 4-4 going into a shootout, no matter what, the winning team will be 5-4. Yeah. So now you can't be uh, penalized for getting a game into extras and getting a game into another extra inning when now it's bases load and you give up 10 runs and now your tournament's over. Yes. You might as well yeah. lose 3 nothing. You might as well lose one nothing in 4 innings. And so. especially since so many teams have a chance to make the Saturday afternoon, like you want that run diff to be pretty right. pretty good. We're not trying to blow up people's day by because people are starting in very different spots. So the loss not dropping, the that run diff not carrying over, like ends up making it a little more equitable. Once we get to everyone played their five games, let's rank them. It'll make sense then. Yep. Agreed. All right, folks. I think that pretty much does it. Anything else we really need to cover? Uh, you know, we're gonna again, we're gonna repost everything tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, we'll see what time we get done with tonight, and then uh, again, we'll reiterate the timing. Really, regardless of what time we start, you got to be there by, you know, a quarter to eight. I think you got to be there by seven forty-five so that you have a time to find out what field you're gonna be on, get your stuff down, warm up a little bit, and then since we're gonna be so close, hopefully, everyone could just come right to the middle. We'll have our announcement. We'll do our uh, national anthem. Perhaps I'll reach out to a couple of our Wiffle friends who have sang before. Maybe they'll do a duet this time. Well, weird. I don't know, but at least one of them will do it. Um, I might. I threw my trumpet out, so I can't play it. On the trumpet. It's a very sad day for trumpet world. Um, but be there really by seven forty-five to check in, um, and then we're going to try to have the first pitch between nine and nine thirty. And though that second round games. Can start right away. Can start right away, and wildcard will start right away. So really, everybody can start except for the enemy in the whiff ink at nine thirty, right. um, which is fine because they might be running a little late and or need to warm up for an hour and a half. Fair. Um, Top golf Friday night. I know uh, that was a post. Very little interest. So if people just want to go, one of us may be going as well, but nothing really organized. But if guys want to go, we can talk about it on the side and we can just go hang out. Um, we're not booking any rooms. We can just show up on a Friday there. It's not going to be. It'll be busy, but it's not like we're not going to get a few days right. we want to play. Uh, any yeah. Long Island Whifflers uh, available Friday, uh, we will do, be doing field crew Friday morning until the early afternoon so that we can enjoy our Friday and mm-hmm. not kill ourselves all day. So anyone willing to help, even just for a couple of hours, um, you know, we'll be out east in Holtzville. Mm-hmm. Um, so if anyone has the day off or gets off early or just, you know, wants to help, would be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but if not... 
you'll have 15 beautiful fields for a really uh, amazing tournament this weekend. We also could use a couple extra bodies Saturday night uh, for helping move the fields over to the stadium to play on Sunday. Um, so even just a couple of people, whatever is really the, the, everything will be there kind of set up. We just need to like bring it there. So that would be helpful. Sure. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to add to this conversation. I would like to end this conversation personally. Excellent. Conversation ended. We will see you at the field 745 on Saturday. And maybe we'll see you Friday night. Or maybe we'll see you Friday morning slash afternoon. I like it.